Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm glad you're all here. Today we're going to play a, a classic Avalon Hill game that um, really is a, a good battle of wits against two players trying to outthink what the other one's going to do. And uh, there's some hidden movement to it and um, well, it can get rather exciting. But the game we're going to play today is Luftwaffe. And this is the game of aerial combat over Germany from 43 to 45. Now, this is an older game. This came out in 1971. When this came out, um, it was uh, different types of design and uh, people really liked the game. I think the biggest downfall to this game was the fact that it takes so long to play. Uh, the game is really a lot of fun. The basic game is fun and gets you introduced to all the movement and the uh, uh, combat of the game but it's really the advanced and tournament game that really gets to be fun. The only problem with that is if you play a whole campaign, you do take a while to play. It could take up to eight hours to play. So, um, you know, some people like to play for long periods of time. I don't mind playing the advanced game, but uh, today we're just gonna go through the basic game and uh, we'll use a little option rule on the basic game, which allows uh, planes to take off on their own accords. So like when they take off, they start using fuel instead of when one takes off, they all take off at the same time. But uh, we'll show you how that plays through. So um, let's look at the setup and get our board ready for turn one. Okay, so to begin with, the game does require a little bit of planning on the Americans part. And um, you have to plan out how your bombers are gonna attack. And uh, the direction they're going to go, what groups they're going to be in, and if you're going to have any escort planes with them. So what I like to do is, before the German player um, is around, is I like to get this all set up and use these pads here. And that's what these pads are for. You have a target sheet where you map out what planes are going to, what uh, bombers are going to attack, or bomber groups, I should say, are going to attack what targets. And then you also have a miniature version of the map on the back here. And we'll look at this a little bit more in detail, but uh, that's where you, a lot of your planning is gonna go. So what I like to do is I like to put the bombers that are gonna um, hit these airplane factories. And the airplane factories have this little green airplane symbol next to them. Now all the airplane factories that are by the city like this, you have to endure, um, AA fire from them. Uh, airplane factories like this and this one, you do not. So when you come over to bomb them, there's no AA attack. So I generally try to avoid these, especially on the basic game. Now the basic game only allows us to come in from this area down here and to do one sneak attack from one of these areas up here. Now I'm gonna confine everything um, to the German area here, to just Germany. I'm not going to go to Czechoslovakia or all these other places over here. We're just going to combine, make it sort of compact and have everything over here in this area. So I lay out all of the bombers and I have them in groups because you can, you can fly the B-24s together and the B-17s together, but you can't fly B-24 and B-17s, uh, you know, in the same group when they take off. So they can take off in large stacks or stacks, which makes them a little bit better on defense. Over here you have a sneak attack. So on the sneak attack here you have two... We'll just move that out of the way here for a sec. You have two markers that you can put down, you, you invert them. So they're upside down so the German can't see it. So you can come in any time from turn 3 to turn 10 with a sneak attack. And you can decide if you want two um, units in there or five, up to five units you can put in there. Now only B-24s and B-17s can come in here. You can't put escorts with them. You can also have a no sneak. So um, like you can flip this the turn before. On turn two, you flip this over so that the German can see that on turn th three, you have a sneak coming. And they're gonna have to, you know, allocate resources over here to prevent them from coming in and attacking. And then if you have a no sneak, then that allows two turns where they're, you know, preoccupied up in this corner. But in our case here, we're going to use the maximum. We're going to have five come in 
on turn three. So these are the five that will be coming in. They will bomb uh, here, here, and then here and here. So they come in as a group. We're going to start on number seven here. We're going to put. We're going to write down on our pad number seven. So I can put them on any of these number sevens right here, and then they will come in. And of course, I'll have one that bombs right away. That'll come in right there. And another one that's going to take a little bit of time to get there. And then these three will come in as a group and bomb over in this area here. So these I have marked on my pad here has a sneak rate. Now the rest of my forces will be coming in the start line down here. We have to come in from the west or over here. This is our sneak rate only. And this is our start line down here. So I have them broken up like this. I have uh, this one will be by itself. He'll take off in this area. Come on in. These four right here will all be in one group coming in together. So they'll all be together here and then they'll start splitting off as they get to here. These three will be in one group. These two will be in one group. These three will be in another group. And then last, these three will be in another group. Now, we have to start on the start line one turn before they come in. So all of mine are going to be lined up at the start because they're going to come in in turn two. I like to throw everything out there to sort of flood the German army. Uh, these guys will come in turn three. Uh, at turn two, at turn one, they're going to see all this stuff over here that's coming in. They're going to move their forces down here. They're going to come in on turn two, and on turn three, my sneak raid will come in from behind and hopefully get these five with very little resistance back there. That's my idea. So once we have this, then it's on to the paperwork. And let's show you what that looks like. Okay, so your target sheet has um, all of your bombers right here, and you draw a line from them to the city that they're going to bomb. So once they bomb there, um, at the end of the game, you will show your opponent that they've bombed and that you score the points here. Now, these are all the cities that you can go after that have aircraft factories. And these are important because this is what's going to win you the game here. Now, on the back side, this small little map. Let me see if I can get that in the picture here. This shows my group numbers and where they will come in and where they will attack. And you can see they come in, they split off here. Uh, my sneak raid is over here. They will come in and hit here. Uh, these guys will come in, hit there. Uh, group number four, group number five. Four actually has one that will hit there. Group number five comes in, hits them. And then group number three comes in, hits all these. This is the furthest group that will be traveling with right here. And six will head on over into this area and hit the very edge of the factories that are in Germany. Now the bombers can only travel three squares or three hexes per turn, whereas the fighters can go six to seven hexes per turn. So they can catch up in the air pretty quick too. But um, that's the, my plan on attacking here. Now a lot of people like to use the play by mail chart for this only because as you can see, it's a much larger map. So it makes it a little bit easier to draw out the map and to you know draw your flight plans. Now the bombers have to travel in the fastest route possible to their target. So they have to draw you know as straight of a line as possible to the target and then they can split off uh, as long as it doesn't add to it. So in other words like this one here he can't come all the way over to here and then this guy split off and go backwards. When we're coming he has to split off to go over to there as quick as possible and same way with this one. These guys will keep going forward. Okay, so once I have all of this laid out on my paper here, uh, I'm going to hide this from the German player and I'm also going to take all of these off. I'm going to flip over my two sneak rates so that the German player doesn't know what's coming. And on turn number uh, one, on turn number two, I will flip this over to let him know that turn number three there's going to be a sneak rate. And on turn number three, I flip this over and then he knows how many are going to be attacking. So, but for right now, these are hidden from the German player. And all of these will be removed and put down here to where I will uh, hide them also until they come out onto the start line. Now, in our game, they're going to come out right away. But most of the, let's say I was going to come out turn four. I would put the stack out here on turn three because they have to spend one turn behind the start line here so that the German could look through them. The German can't attack them, 
but look through and see what's coming into uh, Germany to bomb. So let's look at our fighters and figure out which ones we're going to put as escorts and talk about that a little bit. Okay, so these are our fighters, and the German fighters are um, work the same way. Uh, the American fighters, they have a little card next to them here, and they start out with tanks. So they have uh, wing tanks, and they can get 14 turns out of the wing tanks as long as they keep them on. Once they drop the wing tanks, they can only stay in the air for five turns, and then they have to cross back across the start line over there. So they have to make sure they have enough... Um, turns to make it home. If they don't, then they crash and you lose victory points. So the P-47 can go 10 turns and then 3 after the bombs have been dropped. The P-51s can go 14 turns and then 5 after the um, wing tanks, I should say, not bombs, the wing tanks have been dropped. And the P-38s are really uh, good because they can go 14 turns and 6 turns after the tanks are dropped. So generally the P-38s are the ones that you put with, um, you know, at least I put with the bombers as escorts. Now the escorts means that they stay with the bombers and when, an air, when the uh, Germans attack, they have to eliminate these guys first and then they can shoot at the bombers. Now the bombers have a defensive fire. When you attack a bomber, uh, they get the defensive fire against you. These do not, when they're escorts, all they are is just basically cannon fire you know they, they shoot them out of the sky and they never really get a chance to fight back now they can fight back if some of them survive then in your turn they can fight back but during the german turn the only thing they can do defensive fire is the bombers themselves all of these guys i will have strafing and attacking um, the german fighters once they take off now when they have the tanks on they are a minus two we have this other factor here so these other factors, this 3, 4, and 2 here, these are the evaluation factors, or E ratings. And when um, you attack another aircraft, so let's, let's bring this, let's say the P-51 here is attacking the ME-109. It has a 4, they have a 3, so you get to add 1 to your die roll on this one. Um, well, actually, you just, you just go even, but if it was the opposite way, if this one was attacking this one, they would have to, I believe, it subtract one die. And I'll make sure I have that correct when we do it. So the evaluation number is good. Now, if this one had no tanks, let's say this dropped its uh, wing tanks, and this one still had its tanks on because it wants to continue to fly for a little while, this gets minus two, so you get, uh, or this gets a plus two. So there's a two difference if one is attacking with tanks and another one has, or is attacking without tanks and is attacking one with tanks. There's a minus two or a plus two difference, I should say. So they will get the benefit of two on the evaluation. So in this case, it'd be a benefit of one because this has a four and this has a three, so it'd be a benefit of one. So the Germans want to cause the Americans to drop their tanks because once the Americans drop their tanks, they have five turns. They have to make it back to their side of the line and they're done for the game. Whereas the ME-109 can land in any one of these air bases here. Let's see, can you see that one? Yeah. Uh, they can land at this air base and stay there for one turn and refuel and then take back off. So it's worth it for them to drop their tanks. Now in the basic game, once one type of plane drops its tank, like if the ME-109 drops its tank, then all the ME-109s have to drop their tank. The P-51s are the same way. And that's sort of unrealistic because obviously, you know, if, if one plane drops his tanks and he's in, he's in a dogfight over in this area and you have another one that's, you know, completely on the other side of the map and they have to drop their tanks, that seems kind of silly. So what we use in that case is you can download this nice little handy reference here and let's see how much of that you can see you can see it so the p51 so it'll come in and it shows that it has 14 so it's giving you the same information that's on here and all you do is mark when it comes in so that you know that it's going to you know it's going to go out on 16 but if it drops its tank then you would mark it earlier as to when it has to leave so this way you can do individual aircraft it requires a little bit more bookkeeping but it's worth it to make it more realistic. And the same up here for the German uh, ME-109s, 110s, 190s, and 410s here. So uh, this is a nice little sheet to print out uh, to keep track of your tanks and uh, wing tanks and when you drop them. 
So we're going to designate these three to go with our three biggest bomber groups and our most likely our bomber groups that are going furthest into Germany will put these as escorts. The rest of these will fly near them, but they will just attack as soon as they see an ME-109 or a uh, Falkwolf come up in the air to attack, uh, they will go after them right away and that hopefully will cause them to drop their tanks so they don't have as much time in the air and hopefully eliminate some of them too at the same time. All right, so let's get back to the game. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my bombers off and put them in their groups down here. Now in our case, we're just gonna have them sitting here where you can see them. We're not gonna be hiding them because obviously I am the German player too, so you can see them. But you can see these, these are our bombers here. Now this one here was going the furthest in, so I'm gonna put a P-38, maybe a P-38 here. This was my sneak attack, so no escort can go there. And put another one right, let's see, 95. And we'll put, we'll put an escort. We'll put two escorts on the one that's going way deep. This one's going way up here. So we're gonna put two escorts on that one. All right. So we have our bomber groups there and we'll move off our P-51s are here and they're just gonna be rebels. They're gonna f go out there and just hunt for German planes there. All right, so let's go and look and see the German setup. Okay, so um, I went ahead and put everything out here just to show you what it looked like at the beginning. Now the Germans take off first. Uh, they go first, but before that you have to place them one, uh, one each to airports so they have to be at uh, you know some air base now my thinking here is that I don't know there's a sneak rate up here we have these two markers to show there's a sneak rate now normally we would not see the stack of uh, aircraft that we have coming in on the sneak rate so all we'd see is just you know whatever is put out on this line right here which we'll talk about in a minute so I know there's a sneak raid coming up here, hopefully. Uh, this could say no sneak raid. I mean, it could say, you know, it'll turn such and such and have nothing there. Or it could have up to five bombers in it. So I really don't know what's up there. So I put a couple aircraft up in these air, this, uh, airfields up here just to protect these three here. And then we have, you know, a couple more and then we have a bunch right here. All this aircraft right here, the way I placed them is that no matter what the Americans put here, it's gonna, their P-51s, for example, have seven range. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the furthest they can go out on their first turn is right here. So I don't necessarily want to take off right away. I wanna wait as long as I can so that when I take off, uh, I can use my fuel to its maximum. So I placed all of these at least seven hexes back so that I can see what the American puts up. So I placed all these down first as a German player. Then the Americans come in and placed all of their aircraft here. Now, as an American player, I wanna inundate uh, when I come in here. So I wanna have as many bombers as possible. So you could save these different groups. You know, you could have group number one, six, and three take off first and then wait for five and four or whatever you wanna do. But I'm actually gonna take all of my groups and send them in. Now I have six groups and you see I have one, two, three, four, five, and six there. And um, they're all gonna take off on turn number one. So once I put them, these on the line there, the German player can go through and look and see what aircraft I have in these stacks. So he can look at all of these. He can't look at any of these back here that are hidden, but he can look at all these to know what's coming. So these have to be here at the start so that in turn one, I can go ahead and fly in there. If I didn't have them at the start, uh, let's say I didn't have anything here, uh, the German player would have their turn. Then on my turn one, I would put all the aircraft here and they have to stay here one turn. Now the Germans can't attack past this line here. Uh, they can only pass, they can only attack once they come into uh, Belgium, you know, past Belgium, Netherlands and uh, Germany here. So they can attack them. Now, um, the basic rules in the manual say the west start line, which I'm assuming you know, this is west-south, and this is west on the sneak rate. But 
on the map it shows that the start line is these broken lines here so i'm not sure exactly which one i can't remember when we played it if that was an issue but i started them here and here so these are these are all of my stacks and this is group one like i said the group i got them labeled here the numbers uh, just for your reference and mine uh, so that you know what groups are going out now this group here has a p38 that is a um, escort so that has to stay with that group and same way here this one has two p38s i think yeah and so they're they're going to stay with the escort now number one and five are the ones that go the furthest up into germany so that's why i put escorts with them the rest of these are going to hit places that are close so they don't have the escorts but i do have some p47s that are going to be flying out uh, just to attack i have some p51s that are going to be flying out just to attack and over here, same way, I have a P-51 that's probably going to tail this guy and help him out if he needs to. But these two P-51s are actually going to fly across Germany over here to meet up with the sneak raid that comes in. So I can help them out a little bit up here. That's, that's my plan, anyway. So I've tried to um, design this so that when I come in here, I'm not going over any big cities. Because if I go over any cities, I have to suffer the uh, AA attack. So I'm trying to avoid cities on my way to wherever I'm going to bomb. And that's the reason of the planning sheet that we use here. Uh, planning your routes. And as you can see, this is kind of small, so it's kind of difficult to see. Um, I think uh, I'm going to go ahead and put one of these on my copier and enlarge it quite a bit so I can see it a little bit easier. All right, so we are set for turn number one. Uh, the Germans are going to move their marker over to turn number one, and we will be ready to fly. Okay, so we're all set up, and we're ready for turn number one. So in the next video, we'll do a couple turns, go through the battle, uh, go through the flights, taking off, landing, all of that stuff. So uh, hopefully you'll be there. And if you want to make sure that you're there, please do click that subscribe button. That helps out the channel, plus gives you notifications when I do put up my next video. So uh, look forward to having you back. Thank you for sticking around this long. See you in the next one. Take care.